Whatever it is, your barbells is a cigarette. My barbells might be some whiskey. Her barbells might be some weed. Her, her, her barbells might be a uh, uh, pookie. You with me here? Dealing with fucks and stuff and things that, that beset us, things that keep us, things that prevent us from running this race. And what, what they're saying here is put aside, put these things on the side, get rid of those things. You know, let, let, let us lay aside every weight and the sin, in case you think I'm just making this up, that does easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Keep in mind, this race is a race involving patience. You know, you know it's patience. Can I, can I help you out? You remember the last time somebody made you mad and you cussed? Well, if you didn't have patience, you just go on back out there, you know, and say, look, I can't make it. Maybe I, you know, I, I'm still cussing. I've been saved for nine years. I'm still cussing. Let me, let me, just, let me just go on back out there and, and get my groove on. You remember that? Remember the last time you put your hands up when you wanted to strike somebody? You know what I'm talking about? Amen. You know when the last time your boss got said something to you that you really wanted to corner that rascal and beat him up? Yeah. 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 You, you with me here? Yeah. Remember the last time you slashed some tires on your boyfriend's car, broke out of the car? Y'all ain't praying with me. I'm talking about things that will cause you to go back. So you need to understand that this race has to be a very patient race. Turn your name and say, be patient, be patient. with yourself. <laughs> Hey, look, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, running to see what the hell's going to be like. And every now and then, I see the old Larry. I mean, in a big way. You with me here, Larry from Woodland Avenue? In a big way. And I've been, I've been around, like my mom said, you know, stayed overnight. I've been, I'm, you know, I've slept overnight on the church pew now. I've been 26 years of past. Thirty-some years of saved, and, and every now and then, Bobby Joe, I see Larry Tucker ride right up. Yeah. So you gotta run this race with patience. Please be patient with yourself. Yeah. You gonna mess up. You gonna make mistakes. You gonna cuss. Amen. Remember last time you lied? Oh, that's another one. Don't that hurt you though when you lie? You're like, oh, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> they roll up on you. Hey, look, can you loan me fifty dollars? I ain't got no money. <laughs> you know you lie. Yeah. And they got no bad in the same time. You mean your guy ain't gave you fifty dollars? <laughs> you mean make God look bad and lie? <laughs> you with me here? You talking about the Lord this, the Lord that, the Lord that? You ain't even got fifty dollars. Are you with me here? You've been better just giving up that fifty dollars. And not lie and hope they give it back. You and me. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm in verse 2. Watch this. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. And here's the good news. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Here's what y'all got to see. Move, move, move the curse for a minute. Just for a minute. Here, here's Jesus. He's sitting at the right hand of the throne. This, this guy, I'm Jesus, right? He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Now watch this. Now, now, stand up, sunshine. Stand up. Wave your hand like that. She just sinned. Wait, she, she just sinned, right? Now, now, God the Father, when he goes to look at sunshine, when he has to punish her, I'm sitting here saying, don't worry about it. I died for that. You remember him? Good one, you pretty good one. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Now, 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 act crazy. Do something crazy. Just, just, just do that. Do that. Ah, okay, baby, now watch this. Now, 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 God the Father's supposed to get him, right? And I'm sitting here at the right hand of the Father. Don't worry about that. I died for that. Now, 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 <laughs> no, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. I ain't gonna help y'all no more. <laughs> they saw it, they saw Look at that. They saw it. They even call them sinners after they act crazy in the church. That's a shame. That's a shame. I'm sorry, y'all. Amen.
But um, so 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 there is a race that we're in, and we gotta understand that that, that, that watch this. Here's what I like, uh, Michael Graham, is Paul is using a metaphor that they're understanding, that they can understand. See, it was the Olympic metaphor. The Olympic games have been those games have been way back in Paul's days, and there were races and there were challenges back in those days. And these were these were illustrations that Paul could that, that the people could understand, the common folk could understand. So he gave this illustration of a race. You and I are in the sprint of our life. And if I were you, if you want to get to the finish line of this sprint, if I were you, I would put aside every weight. Now, truth be told, you're human. There's some stuff you just gonna struggle with. Amen? But there's other things that you can actually put down, and you can put them down right now. You can say, when I go home, are you with me in? I'm going to throw that box out. <laughs> Everybody got a box. <laughs> I mean, you know what's in that box. Come on, somebody. Everybody got a box. Some of y'all are ashamed right now. How do you know about that box? Michael Graham's like, man, I'm going underneath my bed, and I'm going to get rid of that stuff. <laughs> you with me in? Everybody got a box. Go home and get rid of it. You with me in? Put aside every way. Not only do you see the sprint, but let's take a look at the spanking. At the spanking. At the spanking in verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Watch well, this. The people who hung Christ on the cross, they contradicted themselves. Amen. They were hypocrites, every single one of them. Yeah. You with me here? So he, he, he endured the contradiction of those sinners against him. Well, I said, so you consider that, lest you be weary and faint in your mind. So when you think about going through, when you think about the struggle that you had, you consider the contradiction that Christ went through, lest you faint in your mind. So endure, stick, don't give up, don't quit. We just had a perfect example a few seconds ago. I was about to quit. Remember when you was clicking on the light? No, 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 no. He's clicking on the light, right? Yeah. And, and it took too long, and I'm like, you know, we got to get on with the service. Right? I'm like, never click! Light. Light. Amen. Amen. And I'm teaching this thing, and I just gave you a perfect demonstration of giving up right before your light comes on. Wow. Right there. And something? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right there. Just out. Right here. So, so my point is, Think of every issue that you go through as something like we just witnessed that you might give up just before your change comes through. I know I'm right about that. I know I'm right. And then, you know, you go to God and you be looking at God shamefully saying, God, I don't even know why I doubted you. You hear me? So learn from that. Work through it. Take the spanking that Christ takes. You have not resisted. Now, verse 4, you have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. How many of, you, of, of, of us here gave up their blood because of their sin? Not, I mean, because of resisting sin. None of us. None of us. Christ gave up his blood for resisting sin. You have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. You ain't going through that yet. And, watch this. Verse 5, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Okay? Sister Torrance, in your block, you look outside when Lil Allen was, let's say, 11. Little Allen and AJ in the back is standing on Mr. Jones' car on the hood. On the hood of the car. Are y'all with me? Now, first of all, you're going to tell both of them to get down. That's what you're going to tell them. So your boys get down off of Mr. Jones' car. Because first of all, Mr. Jones might bust a cat in. So Mr. Jones love that car, honey. Y'all ain't praying with me. But watch this, but watch this. But when they come down, Sister Torrance, which one of them you gonna slam? AJ or your son Alan? You gonna slam Alan? 
The reason why you're gonna start counting and not AJ, cause you don't want no trouble out of Big Mom. Whooping up on her kids. Am I right, Rob? But you're gonna tell Big Mama and, and hope she whooped the crap out of AJ. But you're not gonna put, you're not gonna lay hands. But the reason why you don't lay hands on AJ is not because you don't love him, but because he's not yours. The reason why, Bobby Joe, your boy can get away with that foolishness that he's doing, your boy you were afraid with, and he not saved, but whenever you try something like that, you find out that all hell breaks loose. It's because your father, who art in heaven, is chastising you and spanking you before you embarrass yourself and him. Y'all with me here? I know I'm right about this thing. So now, the good news is that God is spanking me. <laughs> That's good news. Because if he don't spank me, if I can just run willy-nilly and do anything I want, and I don't see any consequences, that means I'm not his. I am a bastard child. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me good. I can prove it even in your own in your own houses, you close-knit families. Watch this close-knit family. You know you have a blended family. That child's mine, but that one's not. You know the one who's not always complains about how good you treat the one that is. And the one that is, you get in their grill every time they make a mistake because you want them to be better than the one that ain't. You don't mean no harm, but that one got your blood running through. When you look in his eyes, you looking back at yourself. When you look at her, you looking at the apple of your eye because she's mine. Now the others, I like them, love them too. But it takes a very special person not to make a difference between the ones that are theirs and the ones that are not. Have I given you a good illustration there? Yeah. Well, our God the Father is the same way. And here it is. I don't want my children running up and down the street making me look bad. You know why mama made you clean up and wash yourself and put some stuff on and comb that head? Because she don't want you making her look bad. Ain't I right? And don't go around doing something bad in the neighborhood because I'm going to spank you in front of the neighborhood to let the neighborhood know that I don't play that. Ain't I right? So when God the Father spanks you publicly, it's because he wants the whole world to know that I don't play that. She's out of order. No, I don't, I don't approve of that. I know, uh-uh, no, she's my child, and I'm a spanker, and she's still going to heaven when, you, you know, when the day's over, you still come home and go to bed, but you're going to get your behind whip right here on Point Breeze Avenue. <laughs> Am I making a little sense here? So you need to understand that the spanking is out of love. God loved me so much, he spanked me. Soon the word, I get ready to say the cuss word, I get the first two letters out, next thing I know, my teeth hurt. Y'all ain't praying with me. Y'all ain't praying with me. And I got all my teeth, except for one. I lost one of them a couple of years back. Right after they took my, my prostate, the next thing I know, they come from the teeth. So, you know, they, I don't know what they want next, but whatever it is, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm down for it. But, but my point, and that prostate probably was a spanking too. Y'all ain't, ain't praying with me. Y'all ain't praying with me. Y'all ain't praying with me. That prostate thing I went through, yeah, yeah, I, I think that was a spank. Yeah, I think that was a spank. I think that was a spanking that I owe from way back. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, you know that thing, you know, before you got saved, that thing you were doing? I got I got that I got spanking. You can't just get away with that. I got to get that prostate off your dog. I got to get that, I'm gonna leave that prostate. <laughs> oh yeah. And I must have been putting something in my mouth wasn't supposed to be in there either, because I had all 36 teeth. How many are supposed to have 36? Yeah, well, I got 35 now. Something happened. I don't know what I said. I probably said something I wasn't supposed to say. But I was, you know, I look at, I, I, seriously, I spiritualize things. I, listen, I tell you, you become a better person if you start spiritualizing things. Like, why am I, why is my car breaking down? Yeah, it's mechanical, but why is it breaking down? Y'all want to 
<laughs> God, I'm not doing the spanking. I'm talking about the spanking. And you have forgotten, watch this, verse 5, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as my son. Despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he received. In other words, God will whoop your behind really, 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 really good if he loves you. Verse 7, if you endure the chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he that the father doesn't spank? If my father stops spanking me, you got to question whether or not he loves you. If your mother don't discipline you, you got to question, mom, 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 really? Are y'all playing with me? Mom spanks you because she loves you. She disciplines. Your father disciplines you because he loves you. If he just starts letting you, hey, listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you married men something. Let me tell you something I know at 50 years. When you get to the point where the wife ain't saying nothing, <laughs> when you get to the point where she ain't getting mad about it, when you get to the point where you coming and going all as you want, doing what you want to do with your little money and all that, and you count your money over in the corner, my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom you know, hit, 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 like, like you got your money, and you do like this here, and you get over here counting it, and you peel off a little something, get something. My mom say, don't cheat yourself. <laughs> now, I'm thinking, she's thinking I'm a miscount. No, you might be cheating yourself over there, trying to keep things to yourself. So you doing things over here in secret, she got a bigger plan. So back to your husbands, you guys and women don't say nothing to you about it no more. They ain't paying mention to you no more. Hey, listen, you, you, you better get one of them doorbells with the, with the, with the, the video camera. I suggest you get a ring uh, for the house. Because if she ain't mad with you and she ain't upset every time you do something wrong, and she just let you go with the tiny. Go ahead, let me go ahead and slip. Go ahead and slip. I see you. I holler. You might be coming as she go. Oh, y'all ain't playing with me. Y'all be two, two, two cars passing in the night. Y'all ain't playing with me. I ain't talking about no shit. So I'm talking about you coming in and she going out. So, 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 so when they stop chasing with you, when they stop, when they stop complaining, when they stop disciplining you, it's a good possibility that the love is gone. I'm making sense. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I know I'm doing I've got 50 years experience with the same woman. I know what I'm talking about. I'm an expert at marriage. Y'all with me here? I done it. One guy said, I'm an expert too. <laughs> I've been married five times. Y'all ain't bragging me. Well, well, let me rephrase that. I'm an expert at staying married. <laughs> furthermore, watch this. Furthermore, furthermore, uh, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. We, we, we appreciated our fathers who we spanked us. Thank, thank you, Dad. I appreciate you, you know, caring enough about me to, you know, put me on punishment. I'm on punishment now, right there? Okay, thank you. Uh, you know, I'm glad my father loved me, cares about me. We give our fathers reverence who corrected us. Am I right about it? Now, I said, shall we not rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Now, a lot of you wouldn't know what that and live part means until I explain this to you. Over in the book of Deuteronomy, in the book of Deuteronomy, it talks about if a son disrespects, does not listen to his mother, does not listen to his father, and he won't, continues, he's supposed to take him to the elders. Listen to this, y'all, Old Testament. Take him to the elders, and the elders will stone that rascal to death in the square, in the center square of the, of, of, of the town. I'll say that again. If a child, a man, boy, does not respect and honor and do what his parents told him to do. They were supposed to take him to the elders. The elders were supposed to take him to the town square and stone that rascal publicly to death. So when he says here about 
how much we are subjected unto the Father of spirits and live. That's what he's talking about here. For they, very, very, for a few days, chasing us for their own pleasure. But he, talking about God the Father, he chases us for our own profit. See? That we might be partakers of his holiness. Now let me explain to you. Your father could, could chastise you for his own reasons. You know that boy went in my box and stole my good weed? And smoked my good weed? I got the spanking. Come here, boy, you're gonna get a, you get a good whooping today. Didn't I tell you to stay out of my good weed? Now I got some weed over here in the back. But you went in my good weed. You're gonna get your behind whooping. Oh, y'all been playing with me. Now he's spanking you, but not because you stole, <laughs> but because you messed with his personal stuff. His per you know, when we was out high, getting high, we had stuff we shared. Tiny. I know Tiny don't know nothing about this, because you was hanging with Big Mom. But, but when we was out there, we had stuff that we would share, and then we had personal stuff. Private stuff. Yeah, it was private stuff. And this, that stuff there, you know, you, you might not share that with anybody. But you might have one person on the planet that you would share your personal stuff with. Right. So now, the father finds out that the kid goes in his personal stock. He whoops him for the personal stock, not for stealing. <laughs> You in here? Yeah. I'm talking about where they beat you for your for their own flesh. You want you want my whiskey? <laughs> you know I was having a old girl over tonight. You were running my weed. You didn't smoke my weed. You drank my whiskey. I got to whoop you over high. Am I right about it? Come on, y'all. Don't act like you ain't never got whooped for something wasn't supposed to be in the house in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but so what he's saying is that the fathers, earthly fathers, they whip you sometimes for their own pleasure, but God whips us for, for our profit so that we would become better citizens, better saints, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So his whole purpose, listen to this, Tammy, his whole purpose for spanking us is right here. That we might be partakers of this holiness. Amen. I feel like a spanking right now. I want to be holy. Amen. Amen. Not only do we see the spanking and do we see the sprint, but we take a quick look at the spectacular and we try to get out of here. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous. Break that down, Reverend. No spanking right now feels good. Say it again. But now, no chastening for the present seemeth joyous. No behind whooping at that time seems good. But when you got older, once you appreciated that your mama who didn't let you go do what Pookie and Bujanella and all them did, Pookie got locked up. Bujanella was pregnant three times before she was 13. Come on, y'all. Come on, Pookie in jail, saving, serving life. Why? For bank robbery. Why? Because his mama didn't spank him when he stole the nickel. Amen. Right. Ain't I making sense? Yes. I'm making sense. Now the boy who stole, who stole the weed from his father, he's selling weed now. He's a weed dealer. Because the purpose of his father's spanking was not for the right reason. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But our father, he spanked us for looking at the weed. <laughs> Because he know and he know what was in our heart that when we looked at that weed, we wanted to smoke it. So he'll spank us for thinking about y'all ain't never mind. Let me move on. Let me y'all y'all ain't spiritualizing this thing. Y'all, I, I done lost all y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Spectacular. No chasing, seeming, watch this to be joyous at the present, but at at that time it feels grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Unto them which are exercised thereby. The NIV says, for those who have been trained by it. So here's what it's saying. Right now, a spanking don't feel good. Watch this. But nevertheless, after the spanking is over, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. 
unto them who have been trained by it. By what? By the saint. So, so what happens, my brothers and sisters, is that God will thank those who love him. Now, I told you that I was going to teach you how to take a thank. Didn't I tell you that? I tried to keep my promise. Jesus knew how to take a thank. If I, Larry Tucker, were Burmese, I would say, after a spanking, chase him. If I were French, after a spanking, I would say, mercy. Mercy beaucoup. If I was Spanish, after a spanking, I would say, gracias. If I was Chinese, I'd say, doje. If I was Danish, after a spanking, I would say, tak. If I was Dutch, I would say, damn cool. If I was Finnish, I would say, kitos. If I was German, I'd say, danke. If I was Greek, I would say, aparisto. If I was Hawaiian, I would say, mahalo. If I was Hebrew, I would say, toda. If I was Hindi, I would say, dankanya. If I was Iceland or Icelandic, I would say Taku Suther. If I was uh, Indonesian, I would say Terima Kasi. If I was Italian, I would say Grassi. If I was Portuguese, I would say Grazisi. If I was Swedish, I would say Tak. If I was Yiddish, I would say Shenaman. But since I'm just a colored boy from the hood. All I can say today is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the spanking, Lord. Thank you for the rebuke, Lord. Thank you for the reproof, Lord. Thank you for beating me, Lord. Thank you for spanking me, Lord. Thank you for chastising me, Lord. Thank you for doing me in when I wanted to do wrong. Thank you for whooping my behind. Thank you for getting all up in my grill. Thank you for taking me down, Lord. Thank you for bruising my behind, me, Lord. Thank you for, for bringing me back to you, Lord. Thank you for whooping me back to the cross. So the way you take a spanking from God, my brothers and sisters, is simply this. Thank you. Thank you.